Hey guys, something a little bit different today, but it does touch on employment and unemployment and stuff like that. So it's going to be on a similar theme to what I've been doing recently. Today I want to talk to you about becoming something I'm not. Now this isn't something that anyone should have to do and you especially shouldn't do it long term. However, sometimes you do need to do little short term things if you're looking for a job because in employment, unfortunately, people are very biased towards people who look a certain way and against people who look a certain way. You are seen as a good role model, a good person if you have like natural hair colour, no piercings, no tattoos, no obvious makeup, etc. And if you don't conform to those rules and if you have unnatural hair colour and look different, uh, you're labelled as a bad role model. We shouldn't have to conform to this, but sometimes you need a job, beggars can't be choosers, blah blah blah, there needs to be a bit of compromise, and sometimes you do end up becoming someone else while you're at work, or at least during the interview process. Now I know not all of you follow me on Twitter, and those who do might not have seen every tweet I do, like I don't expect that you stalk me, so I'm just going to give a recap of what's been happening recently in my employment. I went to a local nursery for an interview, and it went very well. I said lots of positive things about myself, I was able to show how I'm creative and how I have a passion for how children learn and use their own imagination, blah blah blah. And I came across really well, the woman was really happy with me, she gave me a brief look around the setting and then she said that she would let me know about a trial. So the interview was successful because in nursery work you don't get a second interview as such, you get a trial. Uh, that's usually how it works, and if you have a trial it means that you can show them by being in the classroom how you work. And it's much better than an interview because you're not just talking about what you do, they can actually see you working with the children. It's a really nice part of the interview process. So my interview was successful and I got a trial and I was really happy about it. On the way out I got a phone call from another nursery saying they'd like to see me for an interview and I said, this was to the agency woman, I said, I'll be honest, I've actually had a successful interview just now, you've just missed it, um, and I have a trial next week, and they're going to let me know when it is, so I just thought I'd let you know that that's happening and that I might not be able to go for your job. And the lady from the agency said, that's fine, come to the interview, I think it was the next day, come to the interview tomorrow, because you never know, you might like the second place more, but I will bear in mind what you said, that you have another job that you probably have. So I already had, like I say, I had a successful interview at Nursery 1 and I was on my way to Nursery 2. I walked in there, some of you might not know what I usually look like, I usually have facial piercings and my hair was like this, it's blue, it was tied back and I was wearing a smart jacket looking very fancy and I walked into the setting, a very nice lady took me upstairs, left me in the office for the manager to come in and the manager came and she sat down on the couch next to me. She didn't sit opposite on a chair like she was about to interview me, she sat down next to me like this. Bear in mind I have a lip piercing here and I have this um, bridge piercing here. And I have blue hair and I, know, I, I can tell that she's definitely prejudiced against this way of looking and she's looking at me and she said, and she smiled a bit like, hi, but it wasn't like a really friendly smile and I just thought, oh no, here come the sarky comments. And she said, you do know that in this setting we have rules about the extreme of, and she's doing this and gesturing to her head and I'm just looking clueless, like, I don't know. And she said, a uniform policy. And I said, that's fine, they're just temporary jewellery, I can remove them, I actually have an invisible one. She said, it's the colour of your hair, you would have to be willing to change this. She hadn't asked me a single interview question, I had a big folder full of documents and qualifications and things that make me a really good person to work with children, including a CRB check, you know, that I'm safe to work with children, I'm not some dangerous person. She did not want to know. The first thing she wanted to know was, was I going to change the colour of my hair? I said, then no. This person hadn't been nice to me once since I'd sat down, so there was no way that I was going to suddenly change the colour of my hair for them, for a setting that I might not even like, and I'm disliking more and more by the second. She said, well then, I'm afraid this interview is over, and someone will escort you from the building. 
so someone had to come in and escort me from the building like a criminal. But I didn't let this get me down. I knew it was ridiculous, but I was mostly laughing at how ridiculous it was. I was fine. I thought, I don't need them anyway. They're obviously not a very nice setting. They obviously don't have a good employment policy. But I've had a successful interview. The people at the first nursery who I had the successful interview with never got back to me. They'd told me that I was going to do this trial and they'd been learning about the autumn and hibernation. So I'd gone home, I'd found out about hibernation, I'd printed out all these pictures of different food that animal eats, like flies and acorns and random things. I printed them off, I could have gone in and laminated them if they'd let me. And I went out and collected all the autumn leaves from the area and had a big bag of autumn leaves. And we were going to hide the little bits of food from the animals in the autumn leaves. And that was going to be my activity. I had it all planned in my head. I knew exactly what was going to happen. I thought they'll love me. Never got back to me. So I emailed them asking when I should come in for my trial, saying that I had collected a lot of resources for this activity and I was really looking forward to it. And the email came back saying that she was very sorry, she's spoken to the lady who works in head office, and the lady who works in head office doesn't like piercings and doesn't like hair. So I said that it's a very small piece of jewellery that can just be removed, and they didn't want to know. They didn't even have the decency to tell me that they'd changed their mind. They'd let me get ready for this thing, thinking that I had a trial, and I didn't. So that's how my job seeking has been going recently. So today I had an interview and I can't change the colour of my hair without it being a permanent thing. I read through the uniform policy, there was nothing about hair. It only said you couldn't have facial piercings except a nose stud. I've removed my lip stud. I've taken this out and replaced it with an invisible one. You may or may not be able to see it. I don't know how invisible it is. I actually straightened my hair before I went to bed so I could put it up in a bun. Because my hair is actually usually looking like this. It's wild, it's crazy, it's loose and curly, and it's two different colours. And yes, in nurseries you have to have your hair tied back, but I normally have it as a ponytail. But I just felt like, if they're going to be prejudiced about hair colour, maybe having two unnatural hair colours would be too much. I just put it up into a bun so it, kind of from the front, it just looks like it's blue. I mean, if they don't like unnatural hair colours, they probably won't like blue. But I just thought, I'd cut my losses, make it easier for myself put it into a bun, very neat and tidy, look how professional I am. I have got no eyeliner on, because if you have eyeliner they see you as someone who has unnatural looking makeup and is emo or whatever. And I look really weird, my eyes look disgusting, there's no line underneath. So I'm going to, obviously I haven't had a drastic change, if you look at what I usually look like, and if you look at me right now, there's no drastic change but it just looks smarter. I have mascara on without eyeliner, which is killing me, but it, it, it might help me get a job. It's ridiculous, it shouldn't, but it does come to that. So now I'm going to become myself. I'm going to feel slightly more like myself just by having that. It was the first interview. I had my piercings in, and I had my nails painted, and they said, we can't have painted nails here, and I said, that's fine. For this, no eyeliner, no nail varnish, no piercings. Or not the, this one's invisible. No visible ones. No eyeliner. So they'll just make an observation on me and think, she's that kind of person. It won't be true. But it doesn't matter. So I feel like I became... I'm Amy, but I became Amy Rose. For the interview. That's my actual name. When I have this back, I feel like when, when Colleen becomes Miranda and she puts her hair back and has a really big forehead, I feel like I'm becoming Miranda Sings. And now I'm going to be Colleen. Except less talented and funny. That's a lot more me. So the only difference is the eyeliner and the piercing. I can't speak for anyone else who's going through problems of employment or school or whatever, but that is how I can become someone else for a brief period. Not to lie to anyone because I'm just changing my hairstyle, but just to come across differently to people who care about that kind of thing. I couldn't change the colour of my hair, but if I can get rid of the piercings, and if I can make my hairstyle look really smart in a bob, like McGonagall in the book, I am Professor McGonagall, then that can make a difference. 
I feel better already, but my eyes still look weird with the eyeliner. That is how to do that. So if you're struggling with this kind of thing, if you're being judged for how you look and you don't want to majorly change how you look for anyone, which you shouldn't, um, that's how I temporarily change how I look to fit a certain demographic. You know, I am the boring nursery nurse who never wears makeup. <laughs> I'm wearing makeup, but not like visible makeup. So that's just, I just thought that might help anyone who's going through something like this. I don't want anyone to have to change themselves majorly, but if that can help, then good. So let me know how you feel about this kind of thing in the comments. You probably feel the same as me because people suck and you shouldn't judge people on appearances. However, this stuff needs to happen sometimes. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to go to sleep now because I'm feeling a bit poorly and I hope you have a lovely day. Oh, and it's the fan anniversary tomorrow, so happy fan anniversary to Dan and Phil.